My name is Steve. Welcome back to my shop. Now this surface grinder that I recently purchased has opened up a whole new line of tools and fixtures to build. And one of the thir first things that I'm working on building is a balancer for the uh, grinding wheels. So in this video I'm going to make the arbor. I'm going to be making it out of a piece of stress proof. If you watched uh, Shark Bits number 7 you'll see that I just bought this stress proof uh, on eBay. I got a couple of drops and I think it'll be a great material to work with. So I'm doing all of the machining in one setup so that it will be concentric and I don't have to worry about the arbor itself being out of balance. It's got a few challenges. I've got a taper to cut on it to match the hub from the grinder and then not a big project but I do have to do a left hand thread on it also which is it's not a problem, it's just something else to do. So, let's get started. I'm using one of my grinding wheel hubs to set up the angle on the compound so that I can cut my taper. And the only thing that I have that's got that angle on it that I have available is one of the hubs. So I've mounted the hub in a four jaw chuck and I've got it zeroed out. I'm pretty happy with it. I got it down to well under a thousandth now. It's around five tenths approximately. I checked it there and then I Back that out of there. I put a, my dial test indicator on the face. And the machine face is actually on the back side of this. And so I put it on the face. And I have been working back and forth straightening out the face and then redoing this and I've got the face down to within a thousandth it's the closest I can get it and I've got this down to less than a thousandth I know you can't see the dial test indicator but it's uh, you have to trust me it's it's down to less than a thousandth this dial test indicator is actually something that's pretty special to me uh, as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, uh, let's see if you can see it there. Yeah, there it is. Um, my grandfather, my mother's father, was a tool and die maker. And when I first started getting interested in doing some machine work, he purchased this set for me and gave it to me. I probably was around 16, 17 years old when I got it and I've had it ever since. I have no idea what manufacturer it is. It's one thousandth uh, in uh, five tenth increments and it is uh, it's made in made in Germany and uh, came in a what's it? Well, came in a, a box. I put my name on it. It came in a nice little wooden box. And I've, I've had it for 50 years. In order to rough in the angle of the compound, I squared up the tool post on the compound. And then I put scale 
in to match the angle and I squared that up with the tool post and granted it's not accurate but it gives me a starting point so now I'll set up my dial test indicator and uh, run in the taper with the compound to uh, to zero that out and get that at the right angle reaching in far enough to to do it accurately um, the body of the indicator was hitting and I when I put it at a steeper angle it just wasn't measuring right so I've got this universal back plunge indicator that's got a uh, an adapter on it and since it's got to face the other direction I got my little mirror in place and uh, it's looking pretty good I, the indicator isn't exactly oops there it's, it's dropping in the hole see there's a space in between it's dropping in the hole and then once I get back on the other side there it goes it goes back up to zero so then I come back over here and it's back up on the taper and as I get out to the outside edge I'm back at zero again so that's going to be pretty close I'm, I'm set to do my initial my first cuts on the angle so um, I've tightened the compound all up now so I'm ready to put my stock in and, and start cutting this thing jumps around a little bit with the compound but after I finish, whoops, that's off the edge. After I, once I start cutting the, uh, the taper, I'll use some bluing and I'll uh, check it against the hub and be able to make some, some fine adjustments then. So we're ready to start making some chips. Okay, I've got it all trued up in my four jaw chuck. And I'm going to face off the end, center drill it, and put the uh, live center in. And once I get it set up, I'm going to do all the cutting in this one setup so that everything remains concentric. And then I'll cut the end off where, I'm be where it's being held. My first dimension is to cut it down to the major dimension of the uh, taper so I'm going to cut it down to one inch initially and then I'll take it from there This should be my final roughing pass down to one inch. happened there. I don't know whether something got jammed underneath the cutter. Doesn't make any difference because I'm going to be turning more down there anyway, but okay that should do it for the roughing pass. Now I'm going to mark it off for the rest of my dimensions. 
And my next dimension for this section is going to be 9 sixteenths. I'm going to do 9 sixteenths on both sides up to this shoulder. Actually, on this side, it's going to be half inch. Let's see. No, this side is, that's the 9 16th side. And this side will go down to half. That'll be the finished diameter of the uh, mandrel, will be half inch. But this side gets a uh, 9 16th left hand thread to uh, hold the, the hub on. So I'm going to take it down to 9 16th first. And then I'll measure off that and then take the balance of it down to half. this setup I'm able to take 60 thousandths off at a time which is just great because once before I started getting the lathe set up uh, with the new tool post and all tightened up the best I could do would be about 20 thousandths on decent steel so now I can do 60 which I'm pretty happy with I got plenty of power because I'm running a bigger motor on this than I really should. Okay, I'm at five sixty three. I need 562 and a half for 916, so I'm going to call that one good. Now I'm going to mark it off uh, where my threads will be and turn the balance of it down to half inch. I've got it turned down to half inch. It's exactly on five hundred thousandths. So this side is done, except I got to cut these threads, uh, and they're left-hand threads. Now I'm going to start cutting the other side, and that whole thing goes down to half inch. I decided to start cutting my taper before I got the. Uh, the balance of this down to half inch because this will keep the piece more rigid in here I get a more accurate turn on it so I'm going to start cutting my taper Perfect. We've got blue on both ends, which is where the there's a hollow in the center where it's hollowed out. Perfect. There it is. All the turning is done. The taper worked out perfect. 
Both of the ends, after they cool down, both measure 499, and there's absolutely no taper in the, uh, the half inch part of it. So all I have left to do is set up the lathe to cut the 916 threads. Uh, I've cut a thread relief in there to start it. It's 916. I've got to check the uh, thread count and it's a left hand thread. Once that's completed, job is done. I'm cutting 18 threads per inch. It's my scratch pass. That is perfect. So we'll go ahead and cut the threads. Let's try the nut on. left hand thread perfect perfect absolutely perfect okay all I've got left to do polish it up a little bit and part it off Well, that'll wrap up this video. Here's the arbor. Turned out just great. I'm very pleased with it. The, uh, the hub fits on it nice and snug. And uh, actually, if I put it on, if I tap it on a little bit, I actually have to tap it off because it, it's just about, the taper is just about perfect. The uh, left hand threads worked out good. So we're ready to start making the frame for the balancer. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.